What's up guys? Since I've kind of revisited the blue gun and AA topics, I thought I might as well revisit a couple more of them as well while testing is convenient. In particular, I want to take another look at the Drake gun and magnetic torpedoes. Over the past few months, a few things have been brought to my attention about the subject of the videos. Let's start with the Rainbow Heavy Cruiser Gun, also known as the Drake Gun. First off, the 20 firepower stat that the Drake Gun has over the Gold Guns is worth at least 4% for Heavy Cruisers that have upwards of 400 firepower, which I completely neglected to include in the old video. Aside from gun damage, this increases the damage of everything that has a firepower scaling by 4%. Since I did 5 trials with Portland, and with no secondary gun equipped, what was mostly on display was the gun damage alone, which would underestimate the damage of the Drake gun on ships that have a secondary gun or barrages. Especially so in the cases of say, London, who has a very powerful secondary destroyer gun, or Cheshire, whose barrages actually make up a decent chunk of her damage. Another criticism that I received was that the hit rates I reported were not accurate. Let's see what I said in the video. Something something, keep in mind that these results are specific to Sharnhorse meta and could vary based on enemy movement. Okay, so past me covered my ass at least in that area. Let's just take a look at the Sharnhorse meta fight, which was what everyone was focused on min-massing for at the time, to see if we can find out why the Drake gun performed so poorly. And what do you know? At 43 seconds into the fight, Sharn Horus parks herself right at the end of the screen and doesn't move until the end of the battle. It's no surprise then that the Drake gun would shed the bed at that kind of range. Anyways, I tested the guns again against the Goritzia EX fight, this time with much higher sample sizes. I tested them with Portland, the same as before using no aux gun just to see how the gun damages compare, but also with Anchorage, who is the only heavy cruiser people still use these days. On Anchorage, I used the full regular loadout with twin blue torps, which procs a barrage that scales to firepower, making use of the 20 extra firepower, and then two defensive auxiliaries and the greatsword augment. So these runs here are from the tests I did on stream, so I'll link them and timestamp them in the description of the VOD. In the first set of 20 here, I switched the middle ship when I swapped the guns, so I don't know if that affected the auto AI or something but the SAP gun won in both cases of 10 runs. In the second set of 20, I had Javelin in the middle for all 10 runs. This time, the results were reversed with the Drake gun winning slightly for both ships. After that, I did a set of 40 runs while I was testing 76mm versus 100mm on Shimakaze at the same time. Once again, the Drake gun won out for both ships. The margin is very small for Anchorage though. And finally, I did one more set of 40 runs, 20 with the Drake gun, and 20 with the yellow SKC from the Brunhilde event. Which is third in medium DPS, and on paper, Drake gun deals 9% more damage than it, but it has the widest angle and tightest spread. Overall, the average damage is nearly identical between the three guns because it's pretty much just the sliding scale between higher DPS and then worse ballistics on one end, and then lower DPS with better ballistics on the other. Based on Goritzia's movement, it seems like there is a marginal gain from using Drake Gun, and it remains true that the further away the enemy likes to stay, the worse the Drake Gun becomes relative to the other two guns, while the closer it is to your vanguard, the less of an issue spread is for the Drake Gun. Some people might have decided not to upgrade the Drake Gun to plus 13 after seeing the old video, and in hindsight it seems like I've done them a favor. Although the Drake Gun is likely the best gun in terms of DPS for all armor types in many cases, given the current state of heavy cruisers and the fact that we now have Plymouth Gun and the URDD Gun, its value in being upgraded to plus 13 is lower than ever. Next, let's move on to the Magnetic Torpedoes. The criteria I picked to count the number of hits could be seen as arbitrary, so I just did a bunch of runs with the two different Mag Torps against Goritzia, since it's much more convenient now than how I was testing it before. So these results will include preloads and all, which was not included before. I chose one destroyer with just regular torps in Javelin, one with reduced spread in Yukikaze, Shimakaze because she has double preload, and then Kazagumo because she's different from everyone else, 
with a cooldown reduction mechanic, but still very meta relevant. Back when I made the video, I had my quit mags at plus 11, and recently I finally caved in and upgraded them to plus 13 because there aren't many torpedoes to upgrade anyway. As you can see, the quads won by a small margin for both Javelin and Shimakaze. The saddest part though is that neither of them were actually able to land an extra salvo of torps within the 57 second duration of the fight, and if you don't believe me, you can check the test footage for yourself. The reason that the quads won for Javelin was due to slightly better timing on her 20 second buff, and for Shimakaze, she was able to trigger the barrage on launching the last salvo of torps, despite the torps not being able to land on the target in time. On the other hand, Yukikaze had enough reload to often land an extra salvo of quad mags, so you can see a nearly 10% increase in damage. On Kazagumo, the cooldown doesn't matter as much, so the quints won out by about 5%, but the margin is very small, and more than half of it comes from the 20 torpedo slot alone. In the end, it seems like quads perform about the same as quints against single target even at the same number of salvos, but in a 77 second long meta fight, they can even squeeze out an extra salvo. It is however possible that the rainbow mags are better in the current meta fight as there are 5 enemies, but the difference is likely not super noticeable. In any case, I don't think I've done anyone a disservice by suggesting that they're not worth investing in. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. If you're truly interested in min-maxing down to the finest details, then I hope you're not taking all my videos at face value, but rather using it as a platform to start your own journey of discovery about the intricacies of Azur Lane. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.